Andrew Lowe's discussion of Monte Carlo stimulations and how each time you do it, you get a different trajectory. But if you average it all out, you can make sense out of it. Remember that? That's the way our immune system works. There's a huge amount of randomness, chance, individual differences, but it averages out. And our immune systems are designed to repel foreign invaders, bacteria, viruses, fungi. And it's designed so that every individual may not be resistant to an invader. That is, the flu epidemic that I'll talk about killed somewhere around a third of the, a third of the population. But it's designed so that enough of us survive that we can reproduce. Because remember, despite everything you've heard in the course, our main purpose is to reproduce. That's what Charles Darwin told us. OK, so we all have an obligation. I've done it already. <laughs> so I want to, how, how do you teach business students and even biologists the immune system? And I'm going to start with vaccines. And I'm going to start with some biotech product that I hope all of you have taken recently. How many of you have gotten this year's flu vaccine? OK. How many got last year's flu vaccine as well? Good. How many can tell me what a flu vaccine is? Press your button. It's a, like an inactivated form of the pathogen. Right. It's an inactivated form of flu virus, but why do we have to get it every year? Keep going. Because it mutates. It changes. Every flu is different. And let me explain how this happens and then what the antibodies are that our body produces as a result of the vaccine to make us immune to flu. So here is the virus. It's very, very tiny. It has a lipid coat and a bunch of spikes on the surface. Like all viruses, it cannot replicate on its own. The only way it can replicate is invading a cell, generally something in our nose or in our lungs replicating, and the daughter viruses go on and infect other cells. And you're right, it's, it's a killed or inactivated bacteria, or in this case, virus. And it, it's a huge problem. And flu is fairly simple to solve. Many of you read the newspapers. You've got an Ebola epidemic going on in the Congo. There are Zika viruses all around just beginning to develop vaccines for them. So just let's take a little closer look at it. What vaccines do is trigger the induction of, or, of antibodies, these serum proteins, proteins that are circulating in our blood, that bind to the specific virus not every strain of influenza, but the very specific types of influenza virus that are current. And by binding to the viruses, they will cause inactivation, either preventing the virus from infecting a cell or leading to the death of the virus or both. But each strain of flu, as I'll tell you, show you, is different. You remember H5N1? Can you tell me what H5 means? I'll tell you in a moment. OK? So each one is different. So the first thing to keep in mind is we make these antibodies that will kill the particular strain of virus that we're infected with. The second thing 
and I'll stress this, the immune system has a memory. Once you've encountered that particular virus, the cells that make the antibodies stick around for long periods of time, sometimes forever, so that if you ever re-encounter the same virus, they will immediately make antibodies and repel the invader. So there's specificity and there's memory. And the virus, like all viruses, has a nucleic acid as its genome. In the case of influenza virus, it has eight RNA molecules that code for 11 viral proteins. So it's not a single genome. That becomes important. But it's, it's eight different genomes. And the proteins that are immunogenic are the two proteins on the surface of virus. They're called hemagglutinin, or H, and neuraminidase, which is N. And these are involved in infection of the virus into a cell. But these are the ones that change from one strain of virus to another. So H5 means hemagglutinin 5, N1, neuraminidase 1 and so on. And you'll remember, maybe you'll remember that some of these strains originated in Asian countries where there's a mixture of ducks and people and pigs and all of that. And there's a reason for it. Because the virus, it's like financial engineering, it's viral engineering. The virus has eight RNA genomes. And if two different viruses, say an avian virus, a bird virus, and a human virus, infect the same cell, the virus that comes out can have some green or some purple RNAs and some red RNAs, and it will make a mixture of proteins. And that's what happens. That's how the virus changes from one year to another. It incorporates a piece of a bird virus and a piece of a pig virus by just reassorting its genome. Okay? But every year, they, the people in charge of vaccines at the CDC in Atlanta, yeah, question, go ahead. Use your microphone. We're recording this. Thank you. The reassortment takes place while the virus is inside of a host of a certain species, Correct. but also incorporates yeah, from another if, species? If, if, precisely. If two viruses infect the same cell, the virus that comes out will be an admixture. It will have the hemagglutinin gene from one virus, the neuraminidase for another, and that's why it spreads so rapidly. And you know, again, you have Asian flu, Hong Kong flu. Many of these originated in places, certainly markets. They had to close down all of the um, markets in Hong Kong and several other Asian cities for a while to prevent this. And it may surprise you that the classical, virtually all vaccines are made by growing the virus in hen eggs. And the reason is, this is the original way that vaccines were made. A lot of viruses grow in egg-based uh, systems, and they harvest the virus from live eggs and purify it and then kill the virus. It's only recently that molecular biology has impinged on the vaccine business. And as you can see, only about seven years ago did we grow viruses in mammalian cells rather than hen eggs. And right now, the way to do it is using recombinant DNA techniques. That is, all you need to inject are the two proteins, the hemagglutinin and the neuraminidase. You don't need the rest of the virus. And that's what's being done now, but it's the recombinant flu vaccine. It's the only egg-free vaccine on the U.S. market. So that gives you an idea of what vaccines are. But then, and this will be the last slide before I stop for questions, 
there's a memory. So if you inject what we call protein A, which could be this flu virus, it'll take about a week or two before the body responds by making enough of these antibodies to kill the virus. And that's why you get sick and eventually you recover. If you have the flu, unless your immune system is weakened, after a week or so you begin to recover. And that's the time it takes to make these antibodies. And I'll tell you why it takes a week. But years later, if you're infected with the same flu, the same A, you get a much larger response and a much quicker response. And that's because you have these memory cells. We'll, we'll describe them as memory B cells that are waiting and waiting patiently for something to trigger their proliferation and making antibodies. And that is what it means to be vaccinated. So let me just pause here to see that you got this, and then we'll go on to what an antibody is, because it's a weird protein. Any further? OK. Yes. Is there an implication of a critical mass of sorts that if it's humans are mixing these things, is it going to get worse and worse? It's well, it it can usually avian viruses or pig viruses don't infect humans. But if they pick up a hemagglutin that can bind to a human cell, it's all random admixtures and who gets exposed. But yes, as and particularly now as people travel from continent to continent, you saw what happened with Ebola. I mean, the whole country was freaked out by a few cases that were imported from uh, Africa. So, you know, we do have to be prepared for these pandemics. And you see what's going on in Congo right now, where there's civil war and they can't get the vaccines to people who need them. Uh, okay. Yes. What's sort of um, called constraining us from finding sort of a universal approach to influenza? I understand the H and N recombination. Ah, ah. Because each molecule, there are common structural features, but uh, the parts that specify infection. You know, would you need to buy an antibody to the part of the protein that's involved in infection? And that is highly variable. And the same is true not just of influenza, but of HIV. I mean, HIV is very good because it mutates to escape. We make antibodies if you're infected with HIV. You'll make antibodies, but to the strain that infected you months ago and not the new one. So it's a constant Darwinian selection where the immune system is constantly struggling to make antibodies against something it's never seen before. And that's the problem. And that's the fascination with the immune system. It can make antibodies to something it's never seen or never existed before. And how do we do that?